the character of God has been distorted over time. So we are going to, the woman of God is here today and is going to, by the grace of God, reveal to us from the scripture, the true nature and character of God. So a lot of people need to be a blessing. You know, a lot of people are feeling rejected. A lot of people are feeling rejected today because another God was presented to them, not the God of our Lord Jesus Christ. I get out now. So these people, they need to be delivered tonight by the hearing of God's word. So connect them. Share it, share it, share it to all your contacts on Facebook. Please share it. So woman of God, why the we are sharing it. We use the many five. We use five minutes to pray. We use five minutes to pray in tongues. The Bible said, Paul said, "Pray for me that all trans be given unto me." That I may made known the mystery of the gospel. So the next five minutes we pray for understanding. We pray for revelation and knowledge in the name of Jesus as we pray in tongues. Masha katabo lokoto yakata ikato zabala katubele kata kate 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 if you are watching us, you can also join us in prayer. Bless your name, Lord. Bless your name, Lord. You are good. You are good. Azoto lekato bezaka tokota elekata zikota itala zikoto kota balaka sekete. Belle Cacato, 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 Belle
Thank you, Abba Father. Blessed be your name. Take all the glory, Lord. For in Jesus Christ's name, we are praying. Amen. Amen. God bless you, man of God. Before we proceed, in the next one minute, I just like you to introduce yourself to us. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you very much. My name is Tina. Tina, but I, I love the, my other name. I love my other name, Los Cruz. I love my other name, Los Cruz. I'm from Benin. Okay. I reside in Italy. Napoli. Yeah. Okay. Good to have you on set. Yeah, thank you. So tonight we are looking at God. Yeah, so you already know me. My name is Monday. I like my other name more. Like woman of says, I like my other name. I like my other name too. Mon. M O N. Praise God. <laughs> yeah. So you already know. So we are today, tonight. I just want to educate us more on God's true nature or God's true character. Okay. I don't really have to, so the more you are the more I will get a question from your teaching to also ask and I believe the audience can also ask too. Thank you. Okay. Yeah. Please do it. Hallelujah. Thank you very much for this opportunity. Okay, let's go into it directly because we have already spent a lot of quiet time now, 13 minutes is gone. So yeah. as we all know, the topic of today is the true nature of God revealed as revealed in Christ. Because we know that uh, there are many misconceptions about the character of God, about the nature of God. A lot which is also from the scriptures, because if you don't read the scriptures from the vision, from the lenses of Christ, you cannot yeah. and will not know the true nature of God. So okay. we are going to go into the scriptures and see the true nature of God as it is revealed in Christ Jesus. Because Christ, okay. as the Bible tells us in the book of Colossians um, chapter 1 verse 15, I will read it for you guys. Just in case uh, you are not with your Bible, Colossians 1.15 says, Who is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn of every creature? In this uh, passage, Paul was talking about, was explaining Christ, was explaining Jesus Christ, that Jesus Christ is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn of every creature. If Christ, okay. that, a kind of question that will come to your mind, if Christ is the image of the invisible God, that shows you that because God is invisible, he has to find a way to relate to man, to reveal himself to man. So Christ took up the form of a man and presented himself on earth to, in the incarnation so that God would be known by man. It is the will, utmost will of God that men should know him. And uh, before the incarnation, Man has a way of interacting with God by means, by the prophets. And a lot of this, uh, uh, some of these prophets, they gave also some perceptions about God, which is not ideal, which is not the right nature, how God is presented. So Paul is right Christ is the image of the invisible God. That is Christ. You see, God. the image of God. He, he Paul said in the book of uh, Acts chapter 26, verse 22, he said he did not write any other thing apart from those things that has already been written. So where are those things written? Where did Paul get his knowledge from? In Genesis 1, chapter 26, the Bible says, God said, let us make man in our own image after our likeness. So the one that the Bible was talking about in Genesis 1 was the one, is the one that Paul is explaining in Colossians 1.26, uh, Colossians 1, 15, that he took the image of God, the invisible God, so that God can present himself to man and man can relate with God. So 
after that, what happened? How else do we know God? If we follow this theology of Christ, it is very clear that we will know how God's character is. So God presented himself in a human form so that we can relate, we can know him, so that we can relate with him as a father. If we go to the book of John, that history of Genesis, God gave us explaining in, uh, in plain terms what Moses was communicating in Genesis. It says in John chapter 1 verses, uh, verse 14, if you start from that, it says, I like to read that. Are you hearing me, sir? Yeah, but the network is just breaking. All right, but I'm hearing you very well. If you are hearing me, it's no problem. Forget yeah. about the network. In the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and, and the word was God. The same was in the beginning with God. All things were made by him, and without him was nothing was not anything made that was made. In him was life, and the life was the light of men. And the light shined in darkness, and the darkness comprehended it not. If we go to chapter 14 of this, of this John, first, uh, John 1, you see that it says, And the world became flesh and dwelt amongst us. This is John speaking. He said it became flesh and dwelt among them, among them, that, that's that generation, that audience. And we beheld his glory. The glory as of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. Jesus is the glory of God. Jesus, when you see Jesus, you have seen God in his totality. You, when you see Jesus, you have seen God in, 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 his, in his glory. That's the glory of God. And Christ is, is the one that gave the better explanation of God. Christ is the one that represents, represents God's will because Christ gave, gave us the details of how our father is, of how he wants us to relate with him, of how he wants us to act as children towards him. Without any grace, Jesus is the nakedness of God. Jesus is the intent, the intentions of God, is the explanation of God. If you see Jesus, if you know Jesus, then you have known God. Why are we so, uh, why are we emphasizing this truth? Because if a man does not know God very well in Christ, if you don't know God in Christ, a lot of things will be wrong. Your Christian life will not be effective. You cannot come to God in boldness. You cannot come to you cannot you cannot fellowship with the Father with in, in freedom. You cannot if you don't know God in Christ. You cannot fellow your Christian life will, will be gray. The devil will have many loopholes to get to you because you will not relate to your Father as as a father. Christ on earth explains to us that he and his Father they are one. And you know what that means in the Jewish land, in the Jewish culture, to, to equal yourself with God. It means you are, you are equal. If you say yeah. you and God, you are one. It's, it means you are equal. You are, you, are, you are saying that God, you and God, you have become equal. And that is a very grave yeah. thing for them. But that is how God wants us to say him. That we are his offspring. We are equal with him. That's how God wants us to say him. So this is what Jesus came to explain. This is what Jesus shows in his humanity. And the Bible tells us that this Jesus was very gracious. He was the glory of God. He was the mercy of God, the forgiveness of God. In, in, when John was explaining, there was so much passion. He said they saw him. They saw him in all his glory. They saw him in all his mercy, in all his, in all his kindness, in, in all his, you know. There is so much passion in explaining who they saw because they saw him physically. We, we, we don't know that, but we know. We know those things because it is written that in John 3:16 that God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. That is another 
side of God, you would say. God's love. God did not just love us like human does and say that we say, I love you, I love you. No. God loves us and he went ahead to demonstrate his love. That's the extent God's love went. He went ahead to demonstrate his love for us by sending his only begotten son to take away the sins of the world. I want us to, to see how you know the bible describes god in first timothy 6 16 said god is an immortal that dwells in unappreciable light it was very to show us the nature the fatherhood of god to show us that the end of god's heart the the will of god's heart wanting us to be to know him as a father he takes up the the the, the 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 humanity of Christ. He called the man Christ, become man in Christ, to relate with us, to make us understand what it means to have a father. If we see the fatherhood of God, then we can truly understand what it means to have a father. It's not the 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 earthly father we have and all that. But if you see the way. Christ, the way God demonstrated in his love through, through the death of Christ, then you would understand what it really is to have a father and a loving father as that. I'm hearing my voice back. Are you hearing me, sir? Yeah, I'm hearing you. I'm hearing you. Okay. Let's continue. Yeah. When Christ presented himself on earth, he has to be validated. For us to know that this is Christ. And the Bible tells mm -hmm. us that it's the Father that reveals the Son, and the Son reveals mm -hmm. the Father. So God mm -hmm. reveals Christ. If you remember mm -hmm. when Christ asked his disciples, Who do men think I am? The disciples mm -hmm. they said, Some think you are Elijah, some say you are the prophet. Then he asked them, Who do you see mm -hmm. I am? Uh, so Peter said, you are the son of God. And he said to Peter, flesh and blood did not reveal that to you. That's, that's the father. That was the father revealing the son to, to the very man that was going to bring out this gospel. That was the father revealing the authentic, authenticating Christ that this is my son. Because to, why was it so important for Christ to be revealed by the father? Because Christianity is, is that. That is the, the, the foundation of Christianity. When a man cannot recognize Christ as the Father, when a man has not come to terms that Christ is God himself, that, the, then that man has no faith yet. It is very important that a man knows, not just saying I know, or not just, uh, um, you know, not just saying it, I know Christ is the Father. I know they say Jesus Christ is God. No. There is a knowing, knowing that this is really the Father. This is really the Father. That was why it was important for the Father to validate him, that this is my son. Even in the Garden of Gethsemane, Jesus, uh, the Father's voice told the disciples uh, in the vision, said, after all, they, you know, that Moses and Elijah appear. So they reminded them, God reminded them, this is my son in whom I'm pleased. Yeah, ye, ye, yeah, this one. That is to say, anything that Christ would declare of the Father, that is what you will believe. Because in the Old Testament, a lot of declarations were made about God. You've heard most, most times some preachers have said, or some teachers have said, I've heard it also when they will say, uh, he kill it and he make it alive. You hear them say, yeah, he give it and he take it. So this, when God was validating Christ, he told them, this is my son. Yeah, ye, he. Anything that this one says, that is what I'm saying. Okay, Anything that God. Christ says, that is what he, God is saying. Praise God. Hallelujah. Now, with a few, let me come in. I will ask a question. With a few background you have learned, you have explained to us that only in Jesus Christ, that is where we can see God the Father, that Jesus is the nakedness of god jesus is the revelation of god jesus is the 
explanation of God. That's what you said. Then you said, no, nah, you said a lot of things. I wrote it down. So I just want to break it so that because we have one hour here. Now you said a lot of people shall say that the God that killed you are the God that make it alive. Do we have any place in the Old Testament, for instance, or either for instance or for re, where God killed in the Old Testament? Do you get the question? Did you, did you, first of all, did you get my explanation? I said it is very important for people to know God in Christ because there have been a lot of misperception about God. Some Old Testament folks have all, in the book of Job, Job said that it is God that gives it and it is God that takes it when exactly. his sons died. I'm asking now. Actually, does God take? And he actually, in that take, does God key? That's what I want to ask. Does God key? As God for what key? we have been, for what we have been explained, that's why I was we're, we're coming from the point of Jesus Christ because that is what is going to answer this question. Okay. When Jesus said, "I and the Father are one," what you see, my Father, what I see, my Father do, that I also do. Okay. Did Jesus, the question should be, did Jesus kill when he was on earth? Did anybody okay. die when, no. when Christ was on earth? So if no. the answer is no, it means that God does not kill. And okay. God did, does... The dead who were responsible. Okay. For instance, let's just make an example. For instance, we were told that David killed Goliath and God empowered David to kill Goliath. Are you getting me? So yeah. who, who, who was the one who empowered David to kill Goliath? And we also saw the case of Samson. The Bible who said the Spirit of God will come upon him and before you know it, he will kill all his enemy. Okay. Was it really the truth of God uh, or uh, what happened? Okay. okay. Now we have, you know, in Bible language, we don't have a yes and no quest, uh, answer. We use yeah, yeah. scriptures to answer the it is written whatever it is not written in the bible we cannot find it we cannot put we can't start saying it now yeah. i have a scenario to answer that question for you okay. when jesus in the book we must read it because we okay. must all must read. the problem of the church is this because this scripture has been there for a very long time a lot of people have read it a lot of people have seen it and they continue to do the same thing let's read it we have to read it together matthew chapter 5 Verse 43, nice. let's go. Okay. No, no, it's not there. It's not there. Um, I'm sorry. Luke 9. Luke 9. Let's go there. Luke 9, chapter 54. Let's start from 54. Okay. This is a scenario whereby Jesus was traveling to Jerusalem. It was almost time for his, for, for, for his assignment. So he yeah. sent uh, his disciples to to prepare his way, they were passing through the Sam Samaria. Yeah. Let's start. Let me see where to start. 54. Okay, let's just read it. Okay. I'm starting from... Uh, Pastor, sir, we have to read it, huh? Yeah, no problem. I'm with you. I'm putting okay. my back already. Look okay. Now. I will read, I will read from uh, 51, Luke 9, 51. And it yeah. came to pass when the time was come that he mm -hmm. should be received up. He yeah. steadfastly set his face to go to Jerusalem okay. and sent messengers before his face. Yeah. And ah, this network. What happened, man? Oh, God. What happened to this network? Uh, please just hold on. We have a break of transmission. I'll try to connect our back again, okay? Just hold on, please. Please. Just hold on, okay? Uh, what happened to my network? Just try to connect our. Okay? So, with what we have been able to learn from our explanation that we so uh, that Jesus is God's explanation, or Jesus is God manifest. Good evening, my sister, Ota Edebiri. 
praise God. So Jesus Christ is God manifest in the flesh. And she said that whatsoever you want to know God, we have to know Jesus. And whatsoever Jesus did not do, God does not do. That is to say, what, uh, yeah, thank you, Matthias Nathaniel. What Jesus does, that is what God does. If Jesus did not do it, no matter the experience, God didn't do it. So that was where she stopped before we had the break of transmission. So let me try to bring her back. She's here now. Let me try to bring her back. Thank you. Yeah. Welcome back, ma'am. Thank you very much. Did you, did you, was I able to read the last one before it went off? No, we are. Verse 55. Yeah, you didn't finish the reading. Yeah. Okay, I didn't finish. I, I finished it here, but I didn't know that. Um, oh, you didn't went off. Or, me... you, you stop at, okay. uh, and, at verse 52. Okay, let me just read it here. I think I have it here, 55. Okay, I, I don't have it on my screen. If I want to go to the screen and read it, it's just let me read it on my other screen, 55. But, but it, okay, yeah, yeah, you can read it. Okay, let me read it. Right. it and it came to pass when the time was come that he should be received up, he steadfastly set his face to go to Jerusalem, <laughs> 52, and he sent messengers before his face, and, and they went and entered into a village of the sea Samaritans to make ready for him, 53, and they did not receive him because his face was as though he would go to Jerusalem. 54, and when his disciples, James and John, saw this, they said, Lord, we doubt that we should command fire to come down from heaven and consume them, even as Elias did, but he turned and rebuked them and said, you know not what manner of spirit you are of. Praise okay. God. Hallelujah. This is, the, this is the, those disciples, uh, James and John, they were not just speaking from their head. They were quoting scriptures there. Scripture. They were telling Jesus, uh, like, like you told me now, Samson, should we just kill these people? Should I kill this one like Goliath did? Should yeah. I call fire down to roast this man? Because like, you know, they said it with so much confidence because they've seen it before. It, it has happened before. Yes, yeah. it has happened before. And they've seen it thousands of times. Yeah. They would have done if imagine if Christ was not there, they yeah. would have had to go ahead to do it because okay. why they have seen it before it is written that a man of God did it. So, because it is called a man of God that did it, they felt it was right. It was they right. even told Christ that, like Elias, Elias did, Jeez. they were you know, they were trying to remind him that in case you don't know something like this. It Elijah. has happened before. They, they, if, if it was Elijah, Elijah it will, he will not tolerate this. You can do the same. Then yeah. Jesus turned around and rebuked them. He that rebuked is, them was, and was he said to them, you don't know. What is he saying? The spirit. That is a very uh, big thing. The spirit, the spirit that Elijah used in cons consuming those people was not the spirit of god that is christ defending the character of god defending the nature of god, presenting god to us for a lot of misconceptions that we might have had in time god. past praise god Hallelujah. yeah let us say even if i wish elijah sorry i wish jesus was present physically in the days of elijah he would have stopped elijah Exactly, exactly. That is what Christ was saying. Like you said just now, that the spirit that Elijah used was not the spirit of God. I said it in one place I was appointed to minister. I was almost stoned to death. It not, not, no, you know, know uh, there are people. The, people have a way of defending these kind of things. But right. that is why, see, that's why, pastor, my pastor, that is why we don't rush this thing. You must, when I was, we must first of all establish that Christ is God. Yeah. Before any man, before the, you don't argue with any man scriptures, exactly. you must first of all know if you and that man you are in the same level with yeah. as in accepting Christ as your Lord. Is it Christ the Father? The, 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 uh, is it Jesus Christ that we are submitting to, 
or you yes. have another Christ you are submitting to, then mm. if we both agree that we are submitting to our Lord Jesus Christ, then we can take it from there. We sense the scriptures. We know that Christ is the representative. Christ is God himself. Christ is God. It is God that came to set this record straight. He came to set this record straight because these things, you know, it still happened today. It yeah. still happened today and it grieved my heart that this scripture has been there. Is there? It is written so that we will have, will learn from them, so that we will correct our mindset from them, so that we, any impressions that we have concerning God that is yeah. not correct, we can use the lens of Christ to correct it now. To say, uh, if Christ did this, Christ said, this is not the nature of God. This is not the spirit of God. God was not responsible Christ for that day. I don't know why. There, there are a lot of things that is very clear in scriptures. Yeah. There are a lot of things that is very clear in scriptures. But the reason why uh, people are not taking those things the way it is is what I don't understand. You know, like Jesus teaching us the nature, the character of the Father. He said, "You have read that okay. you should cost your enemy. That mm -hmm. you should." <laughs> You should, you know, you, you should, an eye for an eye. He sets that record straight. He said, for you to be the fa like your father. That is Jesus teaching us the nature of God, teaching us the character of God. He said, you must learn to give blessings in place of causes. He said, you must learn to turn the honor to turn around that to turn the, the other side does not mean you stand there and let men be you know massacring your face with slap it's just turn around and, and walk away yeah. learn how to let go learn how to forgive that is jesus that is god teaching us the character of god so that we might not take what we shouldn't take from satan all mm -hmm. those things we're saying all those questions you asked the men, most of the time, it is the heart of man that is desperately wicked, like the Bible said. All yeah, yes. uh, evil that the evils that come is mostly from the heart of men that yeah. it comes. If you don't know who your father is, there is there are things you will be taking, assuming that it is God trying to teach you a kind of lesson, or mm -hmm. you know, permitting some kind of things from. I was even coming to that. I was even coming to that. Does God uh, does God use sickness to disable his children? I want you to talk on that too. You know, or like we see, him... <laughs> God, God does not have any enemy in humans. The only enemy God has is death, and he has death. He has death with it. He has death with yeah. it. But God, God, God has never. We are. We didn't see it in Jesus. We were. Okay. We read the scriptures and we see that He healed all the sick. He yeah. healed all the sick. He raised the dead. But when okay. He was healing them, they were. They were. Those men were. Were posing as if they are His enemy. The same people He healed. They are the okay. same people that crucified Him. So there is yeah. nothing like God. You see, this is why we say we should know establish the, the relationship between us and our Father yeah. in Christ. If we know yeah. all those things, we, there is no way we can permit such a line of thinking that yeah. maybe God is responsible for something evil that is happening. It is not no. possible because the Bible says God is light. Mm -hmm. If the God is light and there is no darkness in him, we know that all those works we are talking about are works of darkness. So it is very clear that it's not from God. Christ said, it is the thief that cometh to steal, that he didn't come to destroy men's life. That's what he told the disciples. Mm -hmm. After that, uh, 55, 56, he said, he said, the son of man did not come to destroy men's life, mm -hmm. but to save them. That's what mm -hmm. Jesus said. He has declared the heart of the Father. He has declared the will of the Father. The will of the Father is that every soul be saved. Mm -hmm. And he makes provision for it. God made provision. He didn't just will it. He made provisions for it. Mm -hmm. He made provision that men should be saved. We just mm -hmm. need to get this gospel out there. You know, get as much souls as we can. Mm -hmm. As we can. We you know, we shine this light of God's word. 
so that the people will realize, even the, the Christians, they will realize that there is no way their father will want to discipline them with sickness. Yeah. There is no way the father disciplines with yeah. evil. Yeah. He doesn't have it. There is no iota of evil in him. Mm -hmm. There is none. So where will he get it? He doesn't have it. These things we are talking about, they are within men's activities. Mm -hmm. Yes, they are within men's activities. Man is the one that is wicked. Man is the one that has evil in his heart. Man is the one that lost. It's, it's all within the activities of man. Why well, don't that the back of God and be doing evil and be saying it's God? <laughs> no, they don't have they don't have place to hide anymore, especially the way the gospel of, of our yeah. Lord Jesus is going now. Oh, yeah. yeah. But we thank God that 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 like, more lights, you know, more more of more sons, disciples that are rising up that is only for a, a short time. Because yeah. I remember in 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 a, in, a, in a church even to say prayers if they want to say prayer they said no you know god uh you are the one that kill it you know that is you're not even going to that is no fellowship if we want to start from there that's no fellowship you are not fellowshipping with god because okay. what is fellowship you coming to god with the right mindset is is yeah. your fellowship with your father by the time yeah. you're coming to god with all those all those mindset like you know i don't know james said e he, he, a double-minded man cannot receive anything from God. Oh, if you are coming to God, he said you should come with a single heart because this God is a single heart man. He does yeah. not have two sides. God mm. does not have two sides. God is singular. You can predict him. You can tell what God can do. Mm. You know, when we were growing up, we used to say, they used to say God is mysterious. You cannot predict him. You know, now yeah. I know, we know that God is very, very predictable predictable god is predictable you can predict you can say this is what my father does that is mm -hmm. what jesus did that is what jesus taught us that is what jesus made us to see that we can predict god through Hallelujah. the eyes of christ we can predict if we know christ enough we can say this is what my father can do this is what my father will not do it's not this possible is that, this on that thing is, is that is also difficult for a lot of us to understand even I've seen most folks who claim they are uh, Christocentric, they still find it difficult to understand this place that God is predictable. So no, God, God can decide. <laughs> I know God, God can decide to do what He wants. Are you understanding? Uh, God yeah. can decide to do what He wants. It boils down to it boils down to wrong teachings. Is it God? It goes down to wrong. Teachings. No, why I'm even surprised is. I'm not surprised about everybody, but there are some people who you really talk, this one, okay, this one has seen God in Christ. But when you say God is no longer mysterious, you say, no, 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 don't say that. How can you say the almighty God is not mysterious? There are some things that is still mysterious about God. I get you what I'm saying. So I want you, I really want you to throw more light on this area and make us understand that God is not mysterious. God has been hidden. I, I just want you to throw more light on it. Let's yeah. read the book. Let's well, let's go to James. James has a better explanation. Let's just yeah. go and see what uh, uh, Brother James said about God's character. About yeah. you know, James yeah. chapter one. Let me see what we start from. Okay. Let's start from this piece. Uh, chapter 1, verse 13. I will read it. Are you hearing me, sir? Yeah, I'm with you, man. Yeah. Okay. Let no man stay when he is tempted. Mm. I am tempted of God. Mm -hmm. For God cannot be tempted with evil. Mm -hmm. Neither tempted he any man. He has Please. not tempted for. Even in the Old Testament, he has not tested. <laughs> like, like he didn't tempt any man. If he... I mean, the, the Bible says he is the same yesterday, today, and forever. If he is the same, is, is, he, is he not changing in the New Testament? He has always been the same. He will be always be the same. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. That is, a, that is the message of of, let's see that God changed in the New Testament. It yeah, it about, doesn't uh, change. And the very scripture, the very scripture they have is their weakness. The very scripture is bearing them witness. And, and 
I don't understand. God, the Bible says God does not change. He's the same. Jesus, the same yesterday, today, and forever. He is the same. If he does not change, is he now today that he will start changing? Is his nature, his nature is 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 consistent. Constant. If you have known him, if if the God you know is a wicked God, that you will have a wicked God for the rest of your life. That if the God you know is a good God, a loving father. A, 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 a God full of compassion. That's the God that you have. You, mm -hmm. you, there is no two ways of in God, uh, about God. God is mm -hmm. singular. And he is revealed in Christ Jesus. Let's, okay. let's continue this uh, James discussion. Okay. The, uh, chapter 14 says, it says, but every man is tempted when he is drawn away of his own lust and enticed. Entice. You know? A, a lot of time when man is trying to explain God, sometimes they are explaining themselves. They are explaining mm. themselves. They will tell you it's God they are explaining. When a man start explaining God with a dual character, just know he's, he's explaining his mind to you. Mm. He's explaining his own mind to you. He's revealing his own mind to you. That mm. is he's definitely not the father of our Lord Jesus Christ. Mm. Let's go on. 15 said, then when lost has conceived, it bring it forth sin. Excuse me. It bring it forth sin. And sin, when it's finished, bring it forth death. Mm. Do not hear, my beloved brethren, every good gift and every perfect gift is from above and oh, cometh right. down from the Father of lights, with whom is no oh. variableness, neither shadow of turning. Oh, no. is, this is... This is in in, in, in in this in this very very verse 17 okay. in a single word this man has given us who God is there mm. is no shadow of turning with him uh -huh. there is no shadow of turning anything that befalls a man it, it tells you James explained to you how all these things come about somebody might be in temptation somebody might be you know, it, or any temptation that comes, the, James said, it is the lust of a man's heart. Mm. It is the lust of a man's heart. You know, mm. sometimes a, a lot of people, they are not content, sometimes greed, sometimes, you know, covetousness. Sometimes you see yourself doing things you're not supposed to do. You know, you just, the, the lust of the, of, of the flesh. And when it brings forth the fruits, the man begins to say, it is God. God has no hand in it. If anything, is how God trying to save you from that. Yeah. That yeah. is the only yeah. contribution God has. He yeah. has no heart in evil. Our God, he has, he has no evil. Where does he have? If he doesn't have it, how is he going to give it? Yeah. And uh, there's one thing I want you to... Uh, I've also seen uh, people, they said God was calling them to ministry but they refuse to enter, uh, answer the call. And before you know it, God have to send accidents. God have to send sickness. <laughs> so at the end, they now have to submit. Uh, so that finish. they can do ministry fire by fire by force. God have sent accidents. God have sent uh, a lot of things to them. A lot of ungodly things to them so that they can do ministry by all means. I want you to throw light on that, please. <laughs> no, we, we know. From yeah. what Brother James said, we now know that yeah. none of these things, these are men's attributes they are trying to explain with God. Okay. And sometimes when man cannot really explain what is going on around him, he yeah. tends to say, ah, maybe it's God. Every, anything they cannot explain, they tend to say it's God. But and, a wise man should yeah. know that. That's not yeah. God. They, that's the point. If it's a, a believer, that's a place of rebuking Satan. Mm. If, if he's trying to do anything for him. God will not say, see, I now understand that the fruits of, you know, receiving Christ, the most uh, first fruit it gives you is the desire to tell it out. Okay. When you really get, when you, not when you, when you get saved and understood what it means to be saved, you yeah. want to tell it out. It's just right. that some people are programmed their mind that church is, is, is an investment or church is a kind of business. So they start yeah. doing as if, Church is a business. They don't get to that, you know, church platform. How they start? Yeah. They start killing themselves over it. If not, yeah. you can just evangelize and tell this good news. That is the fruit that yeah. comes. 
easily with, you know, understanding, you know, born again. You really want to tell it to people. You want to give it out. You want to, you want to call people to come and see what you are saying. That's yeah, it. Like that if woman. God does not force you to do ministry by fire by force, it's not possible. Because there is no evil in Christ. If he does not have evil, I wonder where he finds evil to, to deal with them or evil things to mm -hmm. deal with them. The owner of mm -hmm. evil, Christ make or understand. He said, it's the thief that cometh to steal. But he came to give the life to, to the flocks. The thief, yeah. the thief comes to steal. He comes to steal. Mm -hmm. He comes to destroy men. Mm -hmm. But in today's world, it is not... Uh, okay, that somebody see attributing to God what God is not, uh, what is not God's. Because why? We have understanding. We have understanding. That the first John says the Son of God has come and He has given us an understanding. We have understanding now. We have the same mind. We we can know when is when God when something is happening. We can know when when Satan is playing for now. We can know if we too we are going beyond our boundaries. You know to seek for things that we're yeah. not supposed that will bring us some kind of problems. We yeah. know we know those things. They are not true. We um, know the yeah. Father of our Lord Jesus Christ is light. And there is no darkness in him. Exactly. Praise God. Oh, there's something you said. Doesn't say anything. Man can explain the attributes to God. I believe that that was also one of the error uh, the folks in the Old Testament made. They just attribute attribute everything to God. Both the good, they say is God. Both the bad, they say is God. For instance, uh, in the book of First Samuel, I think of Second Samuel, when he said. An evil spirit from the Lord. <laughs> I can go yeah. have evil spirits. Because yeah, but, they can't really explain it. Yeah, <laughs> but today we, yeah, you're right. But today we don't read such. We don't read such because we know it's not possible. It's not possible. We know it's not possible, yes. And if you read that place, an evil spirit from the Lord entered so, and yet David was anointed of the Lord when he sings. That is, yes, that is the limitation of men in explaining what their visions. That was the limitation of men. You know what is that they said so or that they wrote that kind of thing. It's not yeah. a problem. What the problem is is that men of today, with mm. the revelation of Christ right. as is revealed in Christ, exactly. still going about doing all sorts of things. Just exactly. not because they don't know the truth, but because of their profiting that yeah. is weird that's and, what is really dangerous as when you teach this to me in the eyes of christ hey you go you want to read the bible you want to read the bible is it the bible <laughs> no, oh, this one is this one is funny it's it's, it, it's scriptures it's scripture yeah. there's no rewriting the bible there is the, see this kind of people they need time you know need time of teaching because maybe they have not really transitioned they are still very very, very much in the old in the yeah. old, even in the old, the, the people were not. Uh, they, 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 even in the old, the people were not just so so so. There were still people that believed. Yeah. There were still people that believed. So yeah. it's, it's something very strange. The the thing is, we until they start teaching the 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 teaching the nature, the character of God, revealing it in Christ. Because at least we all we say we are born again. We have submitted to Christ. If anyone that has submitted to Christ, it will not be difficult to digest what Christ is saying. When you're reading the word of Christ in the, in the Bible, it is not difficult because you have submitted. It's not difficult for you to digest what Jesus is saying. So that is where the, problem, the, where the major problem is, is that when they, they hardly teach, I don't know if you have come across churches that hardly teach the teaching of Jesus. They hardly teach the, the, the pistols. They hardly teach the believer who the believer is. They hardly teach the believer the oh. right diet. Especially this place we have, this place we are in Europe, you can hardly find a church who is, you know, who is grounded. I'm telling you the truth. I've been to many churches around. You can hardly see a church who is running in the, in the knowledge of Christ, in, who, who sees God the way the, through Christ. They don't see God. Through, they always see, go back and see. And even Moses, they are saying, they, because they are not teaching it well, because Moses taught about Christ. Moses right. taught about Christ. Moses was the one that wrote that Genesis, 
uh, the five book of Moses, even yeah. all the, I, I read it before in, um, in the book of Acts chapter 26, verse 22, Paul said in his word, Paul said, I am not writing anything new. What mm -hmm. I am writing is what the prophets, what Moses has written before. That exactly. is what Paul did in the epistles, is to explain those things mm -hmm. that has already been written before. And, and because those things were written in promise, now it is fulfilled. So Paul now explained that this was the promise that is now fulfilled. It's not that something is strange. But if they are also they also want to be faithful to, to Christ, they can go and read. If you so much love the Old Testament, you want to do the, the work. You can read the Old Testament and bring Christ out of it the way Paul did it. So if you so much love the Old Testament, or maybe you have something against Apostle Paul, you don't want to read the epistle, you can go by yourself and start Even, doing the job and yeah. read it out because it's all there whatever he re is he, he wrote is all there in the in the old testament he said it himself he said, i am writing none other thing apart from those things that has already been written so yeah. if the until the believer sees god yeah in the light of christ yeah there is a problem that yeah. believer is not going to live a victorious life yeah. because I wonder what God he will know without knowing the Father of the Lord Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. What God? It is this God they will sell to them, the God that punishes, the God mm -hmm. that revenge, the God mm -hmm. that you don't know, the God that has the uh, Mezra uh, flaunts. If he's mm -hmm. angry, you know, you get good. Uh, some, mm -hmm. some have quoted very well. If you do good, you get good. If you do evil, you get evil. You know, these kind of things, they are still selling it. But yeah. when a believer is not is not seated to learn Christ in the, to learn the nature, the character of God through the lens of Christ. He's going to suffer in the hands of, uh, of religion. He's going yeah. to suffer in the hands of ignorance because we have seen it in scripture that the father of our Lord Jesus Christ, there is no evil in him. He is light. Hallelujah. Jesus said, if you, uh, uh, if you fathers that are evil can yeah. give good things to your, your children, how about your heavenly father? You understand that is yeah. to the extent he went to the, you know to show the heart of God to man to show man that there is no evil in God. He was trying to convince them, trying yeah. to show them, show yeah. us that look, this God is singular. There is no two ways, two sides to God. God yeah. is love, God is light, Hallelujah. God is compassion, God is mercy, God is gracious. Mm -hmm. God is beautiful. God, mm -hmm. When you think about those things you really love in life, think about God because it is only in God you have them. God oh, yeah. is, he, he, the Bible says he healed everyone that comes to him. He is so mm -hmm. compassionate. He forgives or he mm -hmm. forgives sins. There is mm -hmm. nothing. Another problem is when you begin to teach God's blessings mm -hmm. in material wealth, people mm -hmm. begin to get frustrated. Like when, what they are expecting, they are not getting it. Yeah. That is not the blessings of God. Material wealth is not the blessings of God. God, what God promised, he has so fulfilled. God promised that he is going to raise Christ from the dead. Resurrection was his promise and he fulfilled it. Hallelujah. And that is the greatest blessing a believer can have. Hallelujah. That is the greatest blessing a believer can have. Think about it. There is no gift that is more precious than that. It is because men have not seen that as their precious gift. They, you know, they, they trouble God for every other thing that they can get for themselves. Mm. That is the greatest gift a man can have. And a man that can lay his life for other people to live. How can he turn around to kill them? It does not make sense. It does not make a, 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 a natural sense. Talk, mm. Not to talk of, you know, in, in the light of God. It does not make natural sense that a man gives his life to, for you then the man turns around to to take it back no it's not possible so i believe that the people that are standing behind uh, in the name of god to do evil all those uh, you know that are praying us still praying for men to die we are praying for them for them to come to the knowledge of this of, of the revelation of god in christ so that they know that nobody is even dying you are praying for me that nobody is dying why you don't go stop Nobody will die. <laughs> is is even think about it. Jesus Christ is called a savior. You are killing people in the name of a savior. They don't even make sense in the first place. 
Are you getting me? So, woman of God, we it's ten o'clock already. So, I believe maybe next time we'll continue this uh, series if you are chance by the grace of God. I know you will be chance. It is ten. So, amen, amen. Amen. I appreciate we, you. I appreciate you. I appreciate all of you that you know that tune in with us to share this precious moment with our Lord. God amen. bless you, and I thank you very much. Thank Pastor, you. thank you for having me. I'm so glad and I'm so grateful to, to be able to release this 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 word of yeah. God. To thank us. you, man. It's peace unto our heart. Thank thank you. You. Before you go, I want to take one minute or two to pray with all of us for revelation of God's word. And those that are sick in their body, that the hand of God will touch them right now in the name of Jesus. Amen, amen. It is the fa it is the pleasure of the Father to heal, to heal yeah. your body, to heal your mind, to heal your soul. So I yeah. command by the name of the in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ that you are healed wherever you are. Anything that is not going well with you, I command them to go right well with you now in the name of Jesus Christ. Father, I thank all of you that have listened. I thank all that have heard this word tonight. But I thank you, Lord, that this word will multiply in their hearts as they meditate on the word. Father, the heart, let it receive it. Oh, Lord, Amen. let your word begin to do what it's, it's meant for to do. Because your word, Amen. the Bible says, your, none of your word will come back void to you until they yes. accomplish that which is saying. Baba, I said, Lord, Father, that these words that we have heard correct our mindset, correct our impressions, you know, meditate on them, and we get the best fruit in our lives in the name of Jesus. In Jesus' name we have prayed. Amen. Amen. Thank you, woman of God. Thank you, very much. Yeah, thank you very much. Thank you, So have a nice yeah. evening. You too, you too. <laughs> thank Good you all of you. you. Bye -bye. Yeah, please, you have to play this video again and again and again so that you can really understand all that she says. Okay? And I believe... Yeah, I have to play it too. <laughs> no, it's not, yeah, you, you have to play it. I'm talking about... Uh, <laughs> our, I'm talking about our viewers. I'm talking right, about... Bye-bye, Pastor. Thank you very much. Yeah, bye-bye. Bye-bye. Uh, Thank you all. So please share the video, share the video. And if you are your journey, try to watch it again. I promise you, you are going to be blessed. God bless you. I see uh, this woman of God here, uh, Pastor Juliana. I say, God bless you. Thank you all for joining. I see a lot of you here. Thank you all. Thank you all. Thank you all. God bless you. So join us again next week at the same time, 9 p.m. And we'll draw the curtain, 10 p.m. Bye-bye. Yeah, I don't know.